In April 2020, during quarantine, I was waiting to watch my favorite TV series, Westworld. The series was about artificial intelligence and how it's uh, controlling the world. And in one cut, the narrator said, the, narr the narrator was mentioning why, artifi why, artifi why it is important to let artificial intelligence rule us and protect us from humanity. During that, the director showed a cut that of a city is, that is full of destruction, and there it is. When I looked at this, like for someone who likes CGI, I wanted to know how this CGI was created. But after looking at it a bit more, I said, wait a minute, that's my city, Hamas, in Syria, with all the destruction at it. I saw my city, the one I lived all of my life, when the render said, like humankind was hurting towards extinction. My city was an example of extinction of humanity. When I saw this scene, when I saw this subtitle, I said, wait a minute, that's not true. Like, we live all of our life like this, me and all the Syrians, and we just used to the destruction. We just know how to deal with it as it's a normal thing in our life. So why the people outside seeing it as an example of extension of humanity. This was the first time I saw my country in another way. For us, for us, we lived in almost all of our life in this. And the Syrians got used to everything that's happening for them as it's their daily life. Even though that is, that is one chapter of my generation, we are called the generation of war. The generation that used to live with war, with conflict, with post-war events, and guess what? For us, it's okay. Like, it's happening everywhere, right? So, let me explain you who's my generation. In, gen in general, generations that are the people who were born between 1995 and 2010. And this generation in Syria are those people who lived most of their lives in war and conflicts since 2011. So let me tell you why my generation is special and what did they experience. Imagine being in war most of your life. Being used to hear bomb sounds every time, everywhere, since your childhood. Imagine not having electricity most of the day. But you know what? It's normal because it's not the most important thing. Because a lot of people now are suffering from poverty. A lot of people left their home or got displaced. So, and do you think that's enough? Do you think this internal conflict is enough? Of course not. There are many stages that you should go through as a Syrian. Okay, raise your hand if you ever dreamed to go to MIT. That's a big amount. <laughs> like, one day in 2017, I opened an article in Time magazine. It was talking about a teenager from my city who got accepted, accepted in MIT with a full scholarship. His dream became true. Like, imagine someone who lives in, in a conflict area, who got accepted in the most, in the best university in the world. How happy he will be. But th this happy stopped when his visa for the US got denied twice. Like, for, because for Syrians, you are not allowed to enter this, the US, without, whatever, the, whatever the situation is, only because you live in this country. Even the ones who left the country are always hitting the news. The racism against Syrians is, is most of, in most of the world increasing just because they are afraid of refugees despite everything they experience, despite all the conflict, all and all their goodwill to offer a good life, a stable life to their children. Most of the, also, most of the people are denying them and don't want them to enter their country. That's what I used to hear in the media every time. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine you and your people are hitting the news in the worst day ever, in the worst way ever? From my experience, I always wanted to do something about. I wanted to do. I wanted to be this guy who's being a symbol of his generation and his country. First, I wanted to apply to Rise of the World, a big competition for all the teenagers to have a lifetime funding to your ideas. But since I opened the application. It was banned in my country because of the international, international sanctions. As many other opportunities 
what were banned just because you live in this specific country. So you can see how it's hard to get involved internationally. When you feel sad about that, it's because the post, when you feel sad about that, it's okay. Like the post conflict situations are having everyone around you in this country. So it's just normal. That's my generation briefly. That's why we always feel that we are expelled from the world and there is no other chances. But also, that's what I thought at first. But when you look into this generation's people's personalities, you will just find them special. You see, those people are surprised if anyone gets outside the country, even for work, let alone tourism, that's the luxury itself. It's hard for them to believe that there are people outside living a normal, stable life without all the problems because you cannot know what life is until you test it. It's weird to find someone doing something abroad because they're, because they're used to that their whole life is to be isolated from the outside world because of the international sanctions. A lot of things go on and on for this generation and it's still handling it if it's their regular day in their life. Oh my god, that's so dystopian, right? Actually, I agree. But did that make the generation, the generation stop? First, surprisingly, the generation of war, after that, just started to be cynical. Under those extreme circumstances, people just want to smile, laugh, and just live the moment. And believe me, when you hear our jokes, you will ask, who are those freaking creatures? For example, when a few months ago, I told my European friend that I was celebrating the New Year anniversary, anniversary super, super passionately. You know what? You know why? Because they gave us three continuous hours of publicity. My European friend looked at me like this, and he said, I'm so sorry for you. I looked at him, I said, no, why are you sorry? You should laugh, not to be sorry. I still don't know, I still don't know how that was our last conversation. Moreover, Generation Z is famous for being pragmatic. And that is twice as true in Syria. Despite what's happening, there are people helping. Tons of associations are trying to catch up on what this generation lost. Volunteer work, info sessions, teaching international values, briefly, they became more capable of facing life. But what are the cons of the Generation Z around the globe? Lack of real life wisdom? Okay, generation of the generation four has faced war more than anyone in the world from their age. With, and with the right caring, they knew more about their real life in addition to the virtual one. Hmm. What also? Being demanding, putting high expectation on everything? Okay, think about it again. Mine is satisfied with everything, whatever the conditions are. Being the one in the bottom make, make you accept anything above that. What else? Being unsustainable, let me tell you how the Syrian lifestyle works. We don't, cons we don't consume that much of electricity because we already don't have it. We don't consume that much of meat because it's so expensive, especially red meat. And even if you are capable of buying it, there is no electricity to put it in the fridge, especially in the summer. Some people seeking alternative electricity started putting solar panels. Also, most of the generations that around the world makes a lot of waste food. But in Syria, you should think about that again. People are more concerned about each bite they are eating because when your food limit, when your food budget is limited, you will respect the blessing of the food that you are eating. That applies to everything we consume. Have a quick shower so you not waste the warm water that is needed. Also, the shampoo can last longer. Don't buy new clothes and look for second-hand clothes so you'll get high quality at less prices. The sustainable lifestyle that the generation Z lacks is something that Syrians incorporate in their daily lives. That's why I'm sending this message to all the world. Despite everything is happening, despite all the suffering, traumas, injustice, and poverty in my generation, the generation of four is special. There is hope that that lack from this cut. If the world sees us, if the world sees our catastrophe as a humankind is hurting towards extension, we see it. 
uh, as a whole to build a better life towards advancement. This hope is important not only for Syrians, because everyone should learn from this generation so they can civilize their lifestyle more. That's why I'm asking everyone, please open up to us. Make it easier to share what we learned and gain, and gain what, we made, what we missed. For the sake of all the world, please let us seek peace. Thank you.